If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be one of my most requested video of all time, which is trying to explain to you how I get to read on average 100 books a year, kind of just tips and tricks and things that might help you out. You'll notice a lot of these tends to all be like mixed together. So there's gonna be a few back and forth, but I'm gonna to try to make this as clear and helpful as possible. My first recommendation is to try and make it a daily habit. So one trick, which I totally read in a book, <laughs> is to try to link a new habit with an old one. That way you get used to them together. The author was recommending, I think he was doing push-ups every time he went to the washroom. But for me, for example, every time I go to bed, I read for an hour or something. For you, it could be whenever you're having breakfast or lunchtime or when you're going to work in a bus or something. Make it a daily habit. Even if it's just a couple of minutes, you're definitely gonna get used to it and you're gonna read a lot more that way. My second recommendation is to get a library card. That way you get access to a bunch more books for basically free. In my case, my library is so, so, so what I do is that I pay a yearly fee to get access to a library, a bigger library to a city that isn't too far from me. So whenever you're traveling, if you're in the US, for example, you go to a different city, you can pay a fee and have access to that library too. You don't have to go in person. I don't go in person basically ever because I use apps, which I recommend. Also, my personal favorite is Libby. It depends on what your library is using. I know Overdrive is also popular, but I think Libby is better. <laughs> that way you can have books on your waiting list. For example, the small library, I have 10 books I can put on my waiting list and the bigger one, I have 20 books. So in total, I have 30 books always waiting for me. So even if I have to wait six months to have access to a certain book, I have so many other ones that I always have something in my rotation, which means I'm never left with nothing to read. One thing that makes a huge difference for me is audiobooks. I know not everyone likes them, but personally they help me go through so many more books because I can't always sit down and read. And sometimes, like earlier this year, I had a slump. So for me, I can actually do two things at the same time, whether I'm cleaning or cooking or going on a walk, I can actually listen to a book at the same time, as long as I'm not doing something too complicated. I don't have any issues following the story. Obviously you might have to play with the speed that you're listening to the audiobooks or the genre. I find some of them are easier to listen to as audiobooks than others. Which by the way, audiobooks, you don't have to listen to them at one speed. I know some people listen to them at like two or three, which I don't understand how they do it. Maybe it's because English is my second language, but for me, a good speed is usually at 1.5, depending on the book and the speed of the narration. But I wouldn't go through as many books as I do if it weren't for them. So again, making it a habit. So in the morning when I'm getting ready, listening to an audiobook. Whenever I am showering, I have a shower uh, speaker, which totally recommend. You don't have to invest in the beginning. I know Amazon has them for like $15, $20. <laughs> and it's just a couple minutes like that. It accumulates every day. And then by the end of the week, you've read a whole book. One tip that you probably have heard of is to always have a book with you. And I feel like it's even easier nowadays because you might not have a physical book, but you might have your phone. And on your phone, you can have the apps, Kindle, Audible, uh, Libby. <laughs> so finding these little periods of time where you can actually read definitely makes a difference too. One thing I never did until I started watching booktube is to read more than one book at a time. And I want to say, I know it's not for everyone, but one tip is to actually read different genres. So for example, maybe I'm listening to an audiobook that is nonfiction, and then I'm reading a physical book that is fantasy. That way I don't mix the stories together. So just flipping the genre depending. You could have two physical books also if you are struggling to go through a nonfiction, you can also have uh, a thriller at the same time. That way you can just go back and forth whenever uh, you are in the mood for one over the other. Making TBR pals is also something I enjoy doing, basically books to be read. That way you have a couple of books. Basically I tend to have a shelf where I put books that I'm hoping to read during that month. That way I never have a period of time, you know, sometimes you read a book and you don't know what to pick up next. You spend two, three, days, weeks not reading anything because you don't know what to read. It just prevents doing that. I find them helpful even if you are a mood reader, it just kind of gives you a couple ideas for what to pick up next. I also wanted to talk about not putting pressure on yourself about the kind of books that you're reading. I know even in the comment section, I'm probably gonna get people being like, oh, audiobooks don't count as book and it doesn't matter. You don't have to read just classics. You don't have to just read literary fiction or nonfiction books for it to be to, to matter. It just doesn't. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is you. If you read to learn stuff, maybe you can read those. But if you are someone that just wants to read more, wants to read for pleasure, there's nothing wrong with it. So don't listen to anyone, just read whatever you want. If you're not enjoying a book, you put it down. You DNF it, as we call it on booktube, you did not finish it. And it's okay. You don't have to put pressure on yourself. As far as learning to be okay about putting books down, 
one thing that helped me a lot was to just remind myself that when do I ever enjoy it when I have to force myself? Usually it's pretty much never, and the percentage that I change my mind is so low that it's again not worth it. There are so many books out there. I will never have time to read all the books that I want, so why would I waste my time on a book that I'm not enjoying? Which is also why using your library is great because I know some people tend to feel bad about buying a book and then not enjoying it, not finishing it. Just skip all of that guilt. Just use your library and whenever you don't enjoy it, you just return it. One thing that I enjoy doing and motivates me is to give myself goals and reading challenges. Again, be conservative, don't overdo it. If you've read no books in 2020, you don't need to try and read 100 books in 2021, but it could be reading one book a month. It could be to try and read all the books you own that you've never touched. It could just be to give yourself a goal of reading 10 pages a day. I definitely feel like these goals help me motivate myself. And again, you get to choose, don't listen to anyone else, which books count. Cause I know some people will say, oh, audiobooks don't count or comic books don't count. You get to choose, it's your goal. It doesn't matter. I personally mentioned my goal on this channel, but I tend to also put it on Goodreads, which I find it so motivating every time I'm done reading a book to go on Goodreads and just set it as read and done and then see the numbers increasing. Obviously, once again, important to put your goal at a reasonable number, otherwise Goodreads will remind you that you're like 10 books behind <laughs> on your reading challenge. But I think it's fun to be able to rate the books, give them a little review, and then interact with other people, follow other people to just see what they are reading and what they are enjoying. If you don't like Goodreads, feel free to just make yourself a pretty list, or I know some people like journaling, so you can just color the books and just write them down whenever you're done. I feel like just having that step when you're done is super motivating. And link with that, you can join book clubs or you can buddy read with people even in the comment section of videos it's something that you can do just mention that you're planning on reading that book and uh, ask anyone else if they're interested i feel like that having that back and forth is definitely also helpful and motivating and last but not least youtube booktube to be specific the book community on booktube watching videos of people being excited about books always motivates me especially right now with the end of year approaching everyone is going to start posting their best and worst books that they've read during the year and even whenever people talk trash about books i just find myself wanting to read even more so definitely recommend following your favorite booktubers like this channel <laughs> so hopefully some of these tips and tricks help you put your phone down you can leave it in a different room if you have to and pick up some more books i hope you enjoyed this video thumbs up subscribe i will be putting more videos on the screen that i recommend you check out and i will see you in an upcoming video very soon bye